welcome to the uh, Arclight demo for uh, Sprint 5. Um, we're going to demo uh, a bunch of the work that has been going on uh, amongst the team. Um, I'll start out with um, some updates to the ways that you can configure download links um, for um, various uh, uh, files, like potentially you're finding a, uh, a, a link to the EAD XML itself. Um, or whatever you want. Um, as you'll see on the right-hand side, um, this is not our implementation for where the download links will go. Um, I'm just using what uh, Arclight used to have as its download drop-down um, and showing um, what that would look like. But uh, we will be moving this and changing the, the, the look and feel of this um, in, I think, work that's in flight at the moment. Um, but just wanted to put something in the page so I could demonstrate. Um, so this, you know, will look relatively familiar uh, if you've seen the download links before. Um, but I, what I want to show is on the left-hand side um, the new downloads.yml configuration file. Um, so we now have the ability to set uh, some default behavior that will apply to all collections or all documents that we try to render download links for. Um, and so, um, say for instance, uh, I have you know several collections here. Um, this particular default is going to uh, generate a link to every single, uh, on every collection page to the download links. Um, this need, necessitated some abilities to um, interpolate data from the document into the link um, so that this basically a template could be set um, that would work for all of the different um, collections and their, um, their files. So um, this is what is now generating this download uh, panel here. So um, this is a bit difficult to see, uh, and it's not going to work because I'm going to example.com. Uh, but in the URL bar, um, we've uh, configured the repository ID, which is the, the slug that's in your repositories.yaml. Um, so that's something that you have uh, the ability to use as well as um, any accessor on your document. So um, in our cases, our documents respond to um, unit ID and return uh, that piece of data. And then we will URL encode that so that you can uh, construct a URL to a uh, the finding aid either out on the web um, or locally hosted in your Arclight instance. Um, so that's the, the default behavior. Um, now say for instance, um, some I'll just kind of show what we can do um, now on the, um, a collection by collection basis. So um, as before, you're able to supply a key that uh, represent, I think this is the unit ID actually, um, for the, the collection or for the document that you're dealing with. Um, so say for instance, uh, maybe I had five collections, but this particular collection, um, uh, we didn't have the link to or did not want to link to the finding aid or the EAD um, for this particular collection for some reason. So I do have the ability to um, disable uh, links for this entire collection. Um, so now you'll see when I refresh this page, I don't uh, see the links anymore. So that gives us a little flexibility. Um, that disabled key also works on the default level. So you can, um, by default, disable all your links, but only enable links uh, on specific collections. So it works both ways and gives the, uh, the, the Arclight implementer a little bit of flexibility. Um, some of the uh, other things that we've added um, that are of interest, um, you are able to take the um, any, again, any accessor on your solar document uh, to provide for the size. Um, this might become particularly useful uh, when dealing with the default um, behavior. So if I have a field uh, that I index all of my uh, file sizes into in a predictable place, um, I can uh, fetch all of that out and um, construct that as the size parameter or the size thing that's put in the link. This isn't a very good example because we don't index that data. And so I've just used the level um, that's indexed into the document as an example of that. So you could, if this were um, any piece of data that you want uh, to show up to represent the size of this file. Um, uh, similarly, the way that this is um, kind of done, um, it allows for further extension. So um, before we really just kind of had support for PDF and EAD, but um, say I wanted to link to my awesome XML file, um, 
uh, I'd be able to easily do that. Um, I, you can see there'll be some I, uh, internationalization, some translation work that we would need to do. Um, but you know, I can uh, now link uh, to my awesome XML file and any arbitrary file um, that also you can be a static link or you do have the ability um, like the uh, other um, uh, templates to interpolate things from the document directly into it. Um, and I think that's about all we have for uh, download links. Um, as I mentioned, uh, these will be available in the uh, actions box on the show view very soon. Okay, so uh, Jesse just referred to the actions box and I'm gonna show you uh, where that appears in the interface when you're looking at a collection. Uh, you go into contents and then when you're actually looking at a component, the box shows up in the component header here next to the bookmarks and it has a number of conditional pieces that can show up here. Uh, one is the collection ID, um, another next to that uh, if it's available, uh, the component shows up. And if the item is requestable, a uh, request button shows up here. And if you can bookmark the item, uh, a bookmark link shows up here. So, that is, this, this only shows up on the component page. It doesn't show up on the collections when you're just looking at the list of collections. Another change that we've made in this last cycle has to do with search. So when you're searching, you have two views available. One is called the list view, and this is the icon here for the list view that's currently selected. And the other is a more compact view, which when you select that, it shows you abbreviated information in the display below. So that's the list view and the compact view, and these icons are just updated this week for that. Okay, thanks Gordon. I wanted to show a couple of revisions that we've made that have to do with how metadata gets indexed and displayed on both the collection show page and on the uh, component show pages as well. Um, a week ago, we had some issues with the display of abstract and other notes on the collection show page, uh, for example. Um, the collection show page was showing uh, all of the descendant abstract values with its own in this view. Um, we've now fixed that. Um, you can also see this is a case where there are two values for the abstract. Um, so uh, note fields like abstract now are split into paragraphs when there's more than one value. Um, we've also added a lot of fields that were not previously displaying. Uh, that, that are these sort of miscellaneous note fields. I'll show just a couple of examples. Uh, here's a collection that has uh, an arrangement and that's now appearing on the collection show. Here's another one that has uh, accruals and physical location. Uh, these were not previously displaying. Uh, another example uh, that has custodial history. Um, so we've gotten all of these sort of accounted for now on the collection show page. And these are fields that are pretty typical to, to be on the collection top level. Um, they are less, less common on component levels, but certainly valid and they do appear. Um, so we were sure to uh, replicate the display there on the component level. Here is uh, an individual component that has its own arrangement value. So we've now worked those into the display where, they, where they're present. Um, other than that, I just wanted to show quickly some revisions we've made on the indexing end um, in our indexing pipeline. We're trying to speed that up a bit, particularly when we're dealing with really, really large finding aids. Uh, we want to make sure that those index uh, as quickly as they possibly can. Um, we've done some revision to uh, our XPaths where we are sort of looking for the values that we want to index uh, within, within an EAD. We've changed some of our paths wherever we can to use root relative 
uh, XPaths. So there's a really predictable place for our process to be looking for the values. Um, and hopefully that will speed things up just a little bit. That's all that I wanted to show. And I think Leanne is gonna talk about some uh, user interface changes. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, some of the UI updates that we've been making this past week um, on the list results, search results page. Um, first on the result label, um, we before had an icon, but we've now um, added icons for um, if it's a collection level, so this is a collection level icon, or a file level icon, and then the folder icon here is for any level that's in between those two. Um, so those are now updated. Um, we made changes to um, the bookmark over here. It's all the way on the right side, and now it has a ribbon icon for the indicator. Um, this included a change to Blacklight to update the um, JavaScript to allow for us to either use the word bookmark or use a bookmark icon. Um, we made changes to a container label. So now the container label is here on the first row um, in the header row. And we also added the extent label, which you can see right here in, um, again, next to the title in the header row. And we also moved the hit highlighting. So on the highlight hits, they are moved to the top of the search results. So you can see them um, right away there. And um, these changes also, I believe, are applied on the compact view as well with the new icons and with the hit highlighting. And those are pretty much the um, UI updates that we've been making this week on the list search results page. All right, so um, apologies, there's not really much of a UI uh, friendly component to this, but basically um, this, uh, an improvement was introduced which addresses um, improvements made to the indexing process. Um, basically, um, it was brought to the attention of the developers that um, valid EAD need not contain um, elements that are all consistently namespaced within the EAD 2002 um, XML namespace. So an improvement that was made was that ArcLight actually had its traject configuration updated in such a way as to ensure that firstly namespaces are consistently removed from all documents that are indexed. So um, this was done within the code base, uh, as you can see on line 16. Um, that's something that was, that was uh, ensures now that basically if there's some inconsistencies or no namespaces at all within the document, these are, are properly handled when the XML elements are extracted for indexing. And uh, furthermore, there were just, I think, some more general improvements that were made to the actual um, configuration uh, of the Nokoyuri uh, based traject configuration overall. Um, so hopefully I feel as if this is going to kind of lead back towards that issue that was referenced earlier by Sean, just in terms of uh, paving the way for greater optimization when it comes to um, indexing of XML documents uh, for solar. I think the only other thing is just a reminder that uh, because of the Blacklight Link data meeting next week, uh, we will not be having demo uh, at this time. So the plan is to ex extend uh, the sprint that starts tomorrow um, in as of sprint planning tomorrow into to be two weeks. So uh, stay tuned, and we will have a, uh, a sprint. I said sprint six demo two weeks from today which is October 1st. So great. Thanks, everybody.